Hello, my name is Patrick Vilkonofsky, and I'm going to talk a bit about the address resolution protocol and ARP spoofing. Let's recall a bit about basic networking. For information to move across networks, we use IP addresses. But for information to be exchanged on local networks, we use MAC addresses. This is where ARP comes in. ARP will resolve IP addresses into MAC addresses. ARP spoofing is a technique which takes advantage of this process. An attacker will send out fake ARP replies onto the LAN in an attempt to associate their MAC address with the IP address of a different host. This attack is also limited to local network segments. Much like how a port scan is a precursor to a larger attack, ARP spoofing is usually a piece in a larger puzzle. One thing ARP spoofing can facilitate is a man-in-the-middle attack, where two hosts think they're communicating with each other, but they're really going through a third party. We're going to take a look at that through a diagram, and then we're going to see an actual example of it. Here we have an example of three computers, all on the same subnet, dot .253. Throughout this example, the real IP address and MAC address for each computer will remain at the bottom. When dot .128 wants to send information to dot .131, the first step is finding out the MAC address of dot .131. And to do that, we use ARP. The first step in the ARP process is a request. With an ARP request, the computer asks who has dot .131. This request is usually in the form of a broadcast, and when dot .131 hears this request, it responds. Looking at this later in our packet capture, this is what we're going to see. Who has 192.168.253.131? Tell 192.168.253.128. Then we'll have a response. 192.168.253.131 is at 000C29.82.55BA. So far, our example has only included 128 and 131, but our attacker on 132 is going to begin using fake ARP replies in an attempt to fool 128 and 131. In this example, our attacker is telling 128 that it is in fact 131, while simultaneously telling 131 that it is in fact 128. Our attacker will continually do this. So in 128 and 131, offer requests, what happens? Each of them think that the MAC address of our attacker is actually the other host. Normally, 128 and 131 will exchange data between each other. But with our attacker now set up as the man in the middle, this is what actually happens. 128 is going to send information to 132, who is going to read it and pass it along back to 131. 131 will send it back to 132, who will read it and send it to its actual destination, while each host thinks they're simply talking to each other. When we look at the packet capture in just a little bit, this is what we're going to see. Dot 128 is going to send a packet to dot 131. However, our attacker has associated their MAC address with the IP 131. Our attacker will read that packet, modify it, and then pass it back along. In this instance, 131 is going to think our attacker is the source 128. Before we begin the ARP spoofing, Let's take a look at an actual ARP request and reply. Here we can see an ARP request sent to the broadcast destination. Who has 192.168.253.254? 
Tell 192 168 253 132. Looking into the contents, we can see the sender's MAC and IP address, the target MAC, which we don't know, and the target IP. Directly below it, you'll see the ARP reply. 192.168.253.254 is at 005056F94112. For our example, I'm going to be using three Linux Mint VMs. 128 will be our FTP server. 131 will be our client attempting to connect to our FTP server. And playing the part of our attacker will be 132. Here we can see one VM with the IP address 192.168.253.131 and a hardware address ending in BA. Moving to our FTP server, we can see an IP address of 192.168.253.128 with a hardware address ending in 0C. All VMs are operating on a host-only configuration, and here is a real-time packet capture of our network traffic. Here we can see legitimate ARP requests and replies, and in just a moment, our attacker will begin. Here we can see our attacker with a hardware address ending in 97 is claiming to be 131 while also claiming to be .128. You see here the attacker continues to do this throughout. Now let's try to connect to our FTP server. Our client 131 will attempt to connect to the FTP server on 128. Here we see our ARP spoofing has not hindered the connection. And success. We can verify this over on our FTP server, which is operating on 128. We can use netstat to view a list of our network connections, and we can grep for 21. Here we see an established connection from dot 128 to 131. Now let's take a look at our packet capture. Here we can see the start of our three-way handshake, SYN, SYNAC, ACK. You can see here our request for synchronization from 131, our client, to 128, our server. But if you look here at the MAC addresses, the destination MAC address is that of our attacker. Our attacker then takes this packet and resends it. You'll see here a duplicate SYN packet from 131 to 128. However, the source MAC address has changed to that of our attacker and has been forwarded to the actual MAC address of the server. Our second step, SYNAC, from 128, our server, to 131, our client. Here, looking at the MAC address, is coming from the real MAC address of our server, but going to the MAC address of our attacker. Our attacker then takes this packet, which you can see here with our duplicate SYNAC, and changes the source to be from our attacker here to the real destination. And finishing our three-way handshake with ACK from 131, our client, to 128, our server. But looking at the hardware addresses, it is actually going to our attacker who duplicates the packet below. This process follows our visual example. The client sends a packet destined for our server, but actually it goes to our attacker who reads it 
changes the source and destination MAC address and forwards it on, while our initial client and server think they're only speaking to each other. All the while, our attacker is listening. Looking at our packet capture, we can easily spot signs of ARP spoofing. Here we have the same MAC address, 97, being associated with more than one IP address. And looking at our traffic, we can see the same MAC address being used for our destination and the source with what should be the same packet. 